everyone. Welcome to the round table with Vienna White, episode 72. I'm your host, Millie Rouge from the band Vienna White from Edmonton, Canada. So this round table is a Yeg music production. I'd like to introduce you to my co-host today, uh, Marissa Kay, who makes up the other half of the band Vienna White. Uh, now we are going to go ahead and introduce all of our guests that we have on the show today along with us. Um, so I'm just looking at the screen here so I can see where everyone is. Um, so we'll start off to our left here. We have Mathieu Ochapeau um, joining us today. And to our right, we have Cora. Down on our bottom right, Hi. we have Nali. And on our bottom left, Simon from the band Chaval. So thank you all for being on the show today. We are super excited to have you guys on today. Thank you. So welcome. Um, now what I want everyone to just do, we're going to go individually. So I'm going to ask each of you by yourselves to kind of just tell us a little bit about your musical journey. So whether that be how you started in music, um, what you're doing with your music now, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with your music. So I want to start with um, Mathieu, if that's okay. Um, can okay. Can hear a little bit about your musical journey? Um. I have actually a YouTube channel since uh, 2016 um, where I mainly do ukulele covers of various music style uh, in French or in English. Uh, I did more than an hundred covers uh, sometimes with other musicians or singers, whatever the music level, just for the pleasure, the pleasure to, to create. Um, the goal is to show that we can do a lot of things with the ukulele, uh, the, the music, that, that music instrument underestimated, uh, not only like uh, is somewhere over the rainbow. Um, eight years ago, uh, I found uh, the, the old scrappy uh, ukulele of my brother and I tried to do things uh, after that. Uh, I, I bought mine and saw a lot of ukulele covers on YouTube to be able to play what I want. And actually, um, I tried to add some new instruments, original instruments, like U bass, which is a, a tiny bass uh, in uh, ukulele size, and try to, uh, to, 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 to have a band to, to improve, and maybe the next step is to write my own music. That's it. That's awesome. That's quite an experience. And I love actually Marissa here. She plays a lot of ukulele in our band. So I know she'll be super excited to talk about uh, more about that with you. But thank you for sharing that too. Um, now, Cora, I wanted to ask you how you got into music yourself. What's your kind of musical journey like? Yes, yeah, so it all started when I was really young. My mother put a violin in my hands. So I did like 15 years straight of classic music in an orchestra and playing everywhere. But meanwhile, I was growing up, so I was like, hey, I like rock, I like uh, being a rock star. So I started singing lessons. I started like piano and guitar lessons. So I've been literally playing music all my life. And uh, one year ago, one year and a half, I was like, hey, why am I always on the public in the concerts? I should be able to create something cool and it all started and I'm doing my own songs and it's kind of tricky because I have a lot of musical styles in mind. So I do rock, pop, like even a bit of hip hop. So it's, it's hard to find a, 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 a known gender, but I'm trying all the genders because I, I started one year ago. So yeah. that's how I got into it. Well, that's amazing that you've only been really doing it for a year, but it sounds like you've already got a really great start ahead of yourself. So that's amazing to hear. Um, and Nali, can you tell us a little bit about your musical journey and how you got started with music? So both of my parents are professional musicians back home. Um, my dad had a um, music school for a really long time. I think he still does, has it. So, I mean, I've been playing you know, forever. I don't remember not playing. Um, when I was six, I started playing piano and then I moved on to drums a little later and around 15, I started playing um, guitar. I didn't sing, I started singing actually, but a couple of years ago, um, the reason was that I, 
I wanted to write songs and I wanted to write songs for other people. And um, I realized that I had to start singing if other people wanted to hear my songs. So, and while doing it, I realized that I liked it. So I just released my, my EP about three or four months ago and just starting. Um, that's about it. I mean, I moved to LA um, four years ago to pursue, you know, music mm-hmm. and being a guitarist, but it changed my mind. And I think I want to be more of a singer songwriter and producer. So, yeah, that's a great place to be. LA is an amazing place yeah. <laughs> to have your music for sure. Well, not during COVID, I'm telling you, right. you uh-huh. can't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all feel that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. And Simon, um, can you tell us a little about your band, uh, Ravage, and kind of what uh, yeah. does? Uh, Ravage is my uh, current band, most recent band, because the, the first band I played in uh, started 20 years ago, uh, right after high school. And uh, it's, uh, it was called uh, Exxon Valdez. It was an indie pop band, uh, and I was the singer and the guitar player, and uh, I sang in uh, English and French in that band. And uh, we we did tour Europe for 15 years. We had kind of a lot of success in Spain, actually, for some reason that I don't really, that I still don't understand, but that was pretty cool. Uh, and then when that band stopped um, with my bandmates from the, the band, we created a label. So we have a label in Paris uh, named Finalist, on which we release, obviously, our own music, but also other people's music. Mm-hmm. And uh, I created with Martin, the drummer from Ex and Valdez, uh, we wanted to concentrate more on uh, uh, French singing, songwriting. So we created Ravage, uh, which is an electro pop band in French. Well, we, we had this, um, we have this, this uh, catchphrase from a blog that we use that said, uh, in between Serge Gainsbourg and LCD Sound System, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> so we, we use that to describe our music. And uh, we released the first EP in 2018. And uh, this year, or maybe next year, we are going to release uh, the first album. Oh, wow. So yeah, things have been slowing down because of COVID, obviously, and the lockdown and everything. But uh, uh, we have a new single out. So life is good. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll have to check it out. I'm excited yeah. to hear. Fantastic. Cool, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much for sharing a little bit more about what you do as musicians. We're actually going to get into our topic of the day. So on these roundtables, we like to talk about different things. Um, but like we did last week, we had a uh, roundtable where we interviewed Ukrainian musicians. So now we're kind of spinning it around. We're going around the globe and we're talking with French musicians. So we want to hear more about uh, what it's like kind of in your French music industry, whether that be in Canada or in Los Angeles or Paris. We kind of want to hear more from you as a French artist and kind of your experience. So you have your questions? Up? Yes. Okay. So my first question for anybody who wants to jump into this first person, doesn't matter who it is, but uh, I wanted to know what's your favorite thing about French music? Uh, <laughs> it's I, I think that's an uh, it's a it's a hard one for French people because I mean I don't think that my music sounds French but all of my friends all over the world they, they think it sounds so French and I really don't know why but so I think you should ask people on on another show people <laughs> not from France yeah it's uh it's it's funny because I think if you I think if you have uh sort of I'd, I'd say like French essence. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like if you yeah, have I mean, that sort of essence, a lot of people might assume that. So I, yeah. that's that's really interesting that that you bring that up. That's really cool. Um, anybody else who would like to jump in? Well, for my part, I'm trying to sound as American as I can uh, when I sing in English, and um, <laughs> I like to write in French because it's a good way to connect with um, the audience over there. And um, I don't know if you can hear me, that's weird. So that's a good way to, yeah, to connect with the French people and that way they can understand what I'm saying because not everyone's fluent. And um, it's also fun for me, it's easier to write in French. That makes sense, that's my native language. But so I'm trying to write in both languages. Uh, They sound really differently. So 
the writing process is really different. Um, so. And I want to ask actually, Nali, what is the kind of French community like in Los Angeles since you've moved there? Like, is it quite large? Is it small? Is it like kind of barely? I don't know. I, I don't hang out with French people at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. That's amazing. <laughs> I have nothing against them at all, but I just don't. Um, I have a lot of American friends or yeah. from mm -hmm. other parts of the world, but mm -hmm. rarely French. So, yeah, yeah. that's interesting because I, I would. I mean, I would. I would blah, 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 blah. I've had too much coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I would expect uh, a place like LA because they have so many different people from so many different backgrounds. You might be able mm -hmm. to find other uh, similar, similar musicians French, or similar. Yeah. Uh, similar backgrounds. So that's really interesting yeah. that it's uh, that it's not but, the case. That's very surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just didn't look for it because I mean, when I first moved here, I just wanted to learn English, and I knew if I was speaking French, I was not going to learn. So right, um, that was a choice, and a good just point. you know, met a lot of people, locals. So mm -hmm. just yeah, that's actually a very very good point. Yeah, fair point. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think, Matthew? What's kind of your favorite thing? I know you obviously incorporate the ukulele and everything in your music, but what's your favorite thing about French music for you? The, hmm, the, the best thing uh, in French music, I think, is lyrical. Um, maybe with an old story uh, of the France or, or whatever, but Actually, I think they are a really big job in progress and in process with the lyrics. Uh, especially, uh, I think about it, uh, I think actually in France, there are a lot of rap music. And for, and for this type of music, it's really important to uh, develop this world art. The, the the way that you pronounce pronunciate uh, the the word yeah. um, the story that you want to, to 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 tell and even if I think for any uh, type of, of music and any styles or maybe any language in that you want to use in your uh, music uh, maybe in in France actually this is the the more interesting thing, mm -hmm. we can like or not, because uh, actually in my uh, in my YouTube channel I do a lot of rap cover in ukulele, but there are a lot of rap music that I, I, I don't really like. A lot of famous uh, rap music, mm. but even if I don't like or, or I like. I, I can admit that they often uh, a good um, a good work in lyrics. Yeah, well written. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. really cool. Rap and ukulele. Wow, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I need to hear this now. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so I actually want to move along to our next question. Um, now I'm curious to know if you guys think, in general, do you think that French music is well represented in like popular movies or TV shows um, or kind of any kind of media, do you think that it's represented? You, you mean in the worldwide? Yeah, I guess like yeah. worldwide, but... Or in like the uh, mainstream media. Mainstream, well, so. I, I'd say that uh, French, English speaking mm -hmm. music or instrumental music is, yeah. but French music in French, there's still some work to do, yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, because obviously, I mean, there is this the the language barrier for yeah. a lot of people. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, like the best, the, the the best in my opinion, and, and most famous indie pop band in the world, Phoenix, they sing in English, mm -hmm. and a band that would do the same kind of music, but uh, in French, they wouldn't be that famous. And also, people know Daft Punk. People know the electronics scene is very well known. Mm -hmm. But I stay with with. Uh, I'd say we still have to work on the the popularity of the French singing music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though I don't know if we're, if you're like Netflix watchers, but I, there's a lot of TV shows I'm watching right now, and sometimes there's a 
Aya Nakamura, yeah, or like yeah. some rap going on, and it's in French. So that's that. I was like, oh wow, yeah. like I, that's, I noticed that yeah. late re recently. That's the new way to get your music out. So actually, yeah. with Ravage, we have a we have a song in French in an upcoming Netflix show. So that's maybe maybe the future for the French music is there. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting because. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I never thought of it that way because in, in my mind, when I think French music, I think, you know, accordion. Uh, yeah, like yeah. That's that, like the main instrument that yeah, everybody like thinks. Yeah, like or something. Edith that's Piaf, interesting yeah. because that's exactly why when you start uh, writing music in French, you have to decide which language you are going to use. And often people will go to English because they want to avoid that heritage you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And as now things are more relaxed because, because people are getting used to French bands singing in English or uh, French people doing English influenced music, but in English. But 20 years ago, there was, it was like a fight about this in France. I mean, you had to choose a side. Yeah. That was, yeah. Well, I'm agree, I, I agree with, with Simon uh, with, with that point. Um, but actually, and this is maybe obvious, uh, English is the most speaking language in the world. And even uh, if you are a francophone and you want to, to have a band or to, 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 to create music, mm -hmm. it may be better for you to uh, mm -hmm. have some English songs to, more, to, to be more spread in the other country or even uh, maybe with in the France too, it's it's complicated, and I I can see it with another point of view here in Montreal, in the Quebec, uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I come from France, but actually I live in Montreal, and I saw the difference uh, into that two style, two two, two country, mm -hmm. and here in Montreal, uh, even if there are a lot of French Canadian and uh, French, uh, French uh, native, uh, but uh, they will go uh, here. I I understand that it's a better opportunity to 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 do English music because this is more representative, yeah. and for, for the media for the representation of music um, in different types of media. Uh, Maybe for instrument, uh, for, uh, uh, instrumental uh, is not speaking, but uh, this is better to have an English, an English uh, soundtrack yeah. to be to 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 have some emotions maybe in mm -hmm. some movies, some yeah. some support, and for for the French music in medias, this is a lot like a stereotype music like a, a, mm -hmm. you you take you uh, french coffee into the champs elysees uh, more stereotypes with the music the french music in movies than other style of french music mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. i think that's a great point absolutely yeah. like you want to kind of do the language that sells the best but yeah but when you think yeah. about it though because i mean one of the artists that i got turned on to which i never knew was um i think you pronounce it Sk Skromai? Skromai. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's from belgium though yeah 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 he's like <laughs> huge like, yeah. yeah yeah definitely yeah yeah and uh yeah. so i mean i feel like it's artists like artists like Skromai yeah. who are kind yeah. of breaking through that barrier yeah. from someone like me who's not french who won't <laughs> Mm -hmm. seek out French music yeah. still was able to like yeah. have it come Connect. to me but, so. but th there's there's like one stroma every five years or, or, or mm. so so <laughs> but yeah but but still still it's a it's a good example because uh it's the French singing that makes him stand out mm -hmm. so yeah. it could be an, uh, a good strategy to 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 choose your native language yeah. even if you I don't know do hip-hop or uh, indie rock in Montreal, but still, yeah. uh, you can try to be Arcade Fire, or you can try to be Arcade Fire, but in French, mm -hmm. and maybe that's easier. Maybe you will do it better. I don't know, but that's mm -hmm. two different strategies. I, I've tried both, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I not. I don't know. I still don't know which one is the best. But yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to ask Nali, because you have a different perspective yeah. um, being in the States. Like, I myself have never been to the States, so I have no oh. uh, <laughs> kind of say on this. But what do you think um, with representation? Do you think, sorry, I lost my, my question here, but. Um, do you think music is well represented, like French music? Is it represented in the States at all, or do you find no, like it's not, barely there? Not really. I, I've been working on a couple of projects, and they ask me to throw some French in it. Yeah. Uh, they like the, like, it's the je ne sais quoi, kind of. <laughs> so they like that part, but um, I don't, like, I think a few artists, like, I don't remember, Kristen is a queen or something. She, mm. I, I, was, I was going to Starbucks a few months ago, and I heard, her you know, song play in the, on the radio or so they're not huge but some people might like it and play it but it's not this was it was it a song in in french or in english from, it was in english the, though in english, yeah okay. yeah but she i think she only sings in english but oh. otherwise like french songs it's yeah. no not really yeah yeah um, that's interesting because because in canada it's like it's I guess technically We're the national second language. Turn, so, yeah. yeah. So when yep. you, yeah. So when you go to a, like, let's say you're a musician, you go to apply for a grant, you will likely get, have a bigger chance of getting that grant if you are bilingual. And if you yeah. are a French musician, they have a whole other like categories of yeah. grants of, so they, they encourage French musicians to make music they, and, to, and yeah. to share it. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. They have codas on radio on uh, Quebec, I, I believe in it, French, France as well. Um, mm, I can't yeah. remember the percentage, but they, it's 40, they want to 40 in France. 40, 40, 14 14 percent? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what For, I thought. 40, 40. 40? Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. It has to be new and, and up and coming artists through. You know, uh, and, I, I, may, maybe it has to be yeah, it has new. different categories. Yeah, but, but it, it has to be in French, not right. French. Yeah. Like, in so French, yes, is okay. No, yeah. or, like, I remember when I was in high school, there was this huge uh, hit by the president of the United States of America, the band, obviously, that was in French and uh, they would qualify for quotas. So. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. That's crazy. That's interesting. That's, yeah. yeah, that's kind of stupid, no? <laughs> I think, but... <laughs> well. I love it. <laughs> no, no, that's just stupid. Yeah. Well, actually, going along the lines of, of uh, like French music and, and having certain songs be in French, listening to French artists, I wanted to know for each of you, uh, if you had to give your favorite recommendation of your favorite French artist, who mm. would you recommend? Hard I can talk. It's tough. Uh, <laughs> for me, uh, uh, you, you, you want to know the, my f band recommendation? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, just to be sure. Uh, for me, there are two new artist groups really interesting uh is a uh, one guy uh, called lompal this is a rap uh, rap guy but sometimes he sings and he he sings very well the the power of of his lyrics is just unbelievable mm -hmm. i can absolutely understand what he wants to, to to say and and the lyrics can affect you. You can um, you, you, you can be maybe close. That's what he, he described, and this is really great for that. And the second one is a Therapy Taxi. Uh, the, this is like a, a mainly pop music band, but also uh, they they have a lot of different songs in different style and I, I really like this variety of songs that mm -hmm. they can that they can do so yeah. that was my recommendation yeah <laughs> how about for you Cora um, what are some of your favorite French artists you could recommend to be honest uh, I'm really into rap right now but I mean if I had to so in rap I really 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 enjoyed like this damsel guy who started like he really, uh, really known not long ago, and I went to his concert and everything. And to be honest, it's the sounds, the lyrics are really, really hard. Like they're really 
he does not have any problem saying what he thinks. Mm. But I think it's well written, it's deep, and uh, despite the bad words and some repetitive subjects, like I really enjoy his music and I think he has an amazing flow. Like he knows how to play the words and the instrumentals are really good. Mm -hmm. Then I really like this rock band called uh, La Femme. So I discovered it at a Red Hot Chili Pepper concert that to be honest, mm. I was blown away. Uh, it's really nice. I still listen to it. It's really, really different and unique, I think, type of rock without losing the rock essence. Mm -hmm. So that will be my two different recommendations. Oh, you're all going to have to link us these people because yeah. we really want yeah. to check them out. Also, uh, Fubar, I can't read that. Fubar Buzz Quack Quack. I don't know how to pronounce that. Said hi from Quebec. We have a Quebec friend watching us on Reddit. Um, <laughs> said you guys seem to like rap. Do you know Loud or Corias? I don't know who that is. Do you I guys think know? Those are the song names. Oh, well there you go. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> um, and I want to hear from Simon and Ali. Who yeah. are some of your favorite artists? Well, uh, I think the most important uh, French artist in my musical life. Mm -hmm. uh, has been Phoenix, obviously, the band. Uh, it's, it's funny because often when I talk about this band with people from the um, from North America, they don't know that the band is France, is from France. Ah. They, they kind of know that it's not American, so they assume they're English or Australian or something. But uh, I, I, want, I want to mention uh, French singing artists too. So yeah. I, I would say Barbara Gallo. Uh, which actually is the drummer of the band Tame Impala, but he also has a career as a, as a singer mm -hmm. uh, on the French label La Souterraine, which is a very great uh, indie label. And uh, also, I would say Louis-Jean Cormier, who is the singer for Carquois, a band from, from Quebec, Montreal maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure, but he's very, very, very he's, he's such a good writer, really. It, there is something really... Uh, French Canadian about it, from my point of view, and that's funny because I don't really know what the, what it is, but it's not writing like a like a French person. It's obvious when you when you look at, at his lyrics that is from from Quebec, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, hmm. and how about for you, Nelly? So <clears throat> it's a tough one. Um, so I don't listen to a lot of French uh, artists, but I would say out of my mind, I. One of them would be Vianney. I like his, um, he writes his own songs and I really like his lyrics. Always, um, I don't know, I, I like his style, the, the way he writes. And always, he always has really good, catchy and um, interesting melodies. Um, so, Vianney. Absolutely. I don't know. Um, so with that being said, I want to kind of move our conversation to something different. I want to talk about promoting your music. So when you're releasing your music, um, when you're trying to get it out to different audiences throughout the world, if you will, um, do you find that with the French music and French speaking, do you find there's a language barrier when you're trying to promote your music, whether that be on Instagram or you're just trying to get your music out there? Do you find that difficult or do you not find that an issue for you? I'm curious to know your guys' opinions. Like when you're releasing music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, because I'm, uh, I'm trying to to promote either in French, in France, in um, the United States. So I have mm. to. I'm trying to make sure that everyone understands um, what I'm saying. But when I'm releasing a French song, I'm trying to focus to this mm. audience. And some of the people who are following me and are from the rest of the world might listen to it. But um, so. For my music video, I uh, translated all the words and put them in the caption, like the subtitles. That way they can understand and have an idea of what I'm saying. Um, I haven't, if I was pushing my music in the United States, um, I'll go around like smaller blogs or smaller radios and directly contact them. That's what I've been doing in France. So I had some plays in smaller radios um smaller blogs or even sometimes a little bigger uh, local newspaper you know, things like that and have the fans sometimes or people who are following you to do it too that to contact and say hey go check this artist and 
they might talk about you. So. I'm running some ads sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on, I think on it's Facebook uh, where you, want, you want people to, <laughs> to know you. For me, there is there's obviously a, a, a difficulty when trying to promote your songs in French, but mm. even when I was promoting songs in English, the the difficulty was coming from France. So being a small indie artist from a country which is not known for you know uh producing a lot of worldwide uh, rock stars so there is um promoting music in the in north america you know you are uh you're working a, a niche market mm -hmm. so you have to think small like for example in france we have a pr agent uh we have a pr agent in spain too and maybe we can, we can get one in, we will get one in germany but for other countries, we try to use uh, stuff like Submit Hub or Groover. And then if there is one radio that likes our music and that started playing our music, we will try to find, to concentrate on that territory because I think you cannot, um, you cannot just walk the world mm -hmm. as a whole. You have to choose, I mean, when you do it yourself, when you, you have, because we have our, our label and we have to choose and decide everything. You cannot just say, okay, we are going to, you are, we are going to co conquer the world. It's not possible. So you have to choose a few key territories. And so maybe we, we will work in Quebec because obviously it would be easier for people to understand our songs, but that's, that's not the main choice. For example, we can, we have different uh, sync agents all over the world that can use our songs in movies and TV shows. And if, one of our songs get, for example, we have a song in a show from Denmark. So maybe we are going to try and do something there. So, that's, mm -hmm. so basically it's pretty random <laughs> which territory we, we try to work on. It's just luck. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I think. Like working I think with it's, a small market, like knowing, yeah. knowing what your market is, I think is really mm -hmm. important, especially yeah. for French musicians, because you yeah. want to find the French speakers, but you also want to kind of switch it into getting people who maybe don't speak French to listen to your music and to yeah. appreciate the music but on the same you want level. To, you want to find people from uh, English speaking countries that are interested in music not in English and that's already a very very small market. Yeah. So yes. you, just, yeah. you just you have to know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, uh, I want to jump uh, about it. Yeah uh, it's, it's complicated to promote French song in Anglophone community uh, and some something like that. For me, I'm, I don't have a label or whatever. I just do covers in my room. So I need to promote myself right. <laughs> alone. And for me, this is more like a virtual promotion with Facebook groups and, yeah. in, and oh. Instagram and sometimes in, in YouTube. Even if I sing in... In English, uh, my, my I think my target is more like the French people, French mm -hmm. Canadian, and French person from France. Right. Uh, but sometimes I try to post my covers on English Facebook groups, mm -hmm. and have uh, have few few answers, N not a lot, but yes, uh, a little bit, and. But, but this is not the same thing if I just post that in French groups. This, this is not the same. And mm -hmm. for, for Instagram, I think that Instagram is more for Anglophone promos promotion than French promotion. Okay. Just my view about Interesting. it. That's, I can see yeah. that, though. I can understand that viewpoint yeah. for sure. Yeah, because the hashtag, the, the, the more the, the most famous hashtag that you want to use or that you need to use is in English. And if some person who doesn't speak French just uh, f find you because of these English hashtags and yeah. see that this is not in English, yes, that, that, that thing. So, oh, okay, no, I'm not interesting. Uh, I'm not interested. <laughs> well, that's, that's funny because yeah. that's actually how we found all of you. Yeah, was searching I was just going to say. We were having so yeah. much trouble finding French musicians. And then <laughs> yeah. we searched, and then we searched like music in yeah, French. We and we're like, oh, music yeah, we found you. <laughs> it was great. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it's this kind of like hidden treasure chest of like French musicians. You just have to search the right hashtags. So, yeah, it's very true. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but uh, after that, you 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 can maybe uh, get the attention of person with with something original or something different than right. Uh, See, French. For me, the ukulele. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of person in the world who like the ukulele. Mm -hmm. That they that see my vi my videos and my covers. And yes, thank you. But, uh, <laughs> but if I didn't have this, I think uh, I have a lot of some issues with with promote with promotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no. That's a, actually a very very good point. Um, I want to move our kind of conversation another way now. Uh, what is the biggest difference between being a European artist compared to a North American artist? Is there anything you guys have noticed in differences between the two? Um, <laughs> Tough question. I know. Mm. Tough stuff. Thinker. Thinker one. <laughs> There's a slight difference in culture. Um, we're more laid back and they're a little more show off about it you know they, they just go for it um you know we're a little more shy about it. you know like i i was when i first got to the united states like people were telling me a lot of things like oh i play you know piano and guitar and i know do all these things and i realized that i'm like oh wow you, you know must be someone and um, i realized that i didn't talk myself up uh, like they did so I don't know if that make, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, but I, yeah. I realized that we were pretty much the same, or you know, in terms of music, where, where we are. Mm -hmm. But they they will take all what they've done and make it look like they make themselves look bigger than they are. And I think it's good in some ways. Um, you know, it's like the confidence that um, I think French people. I mean, I'm not saying that French people aren't confident, but in our culture. Sure, we're more laid back. That's my point of view. Definitely, I don't know if it's just me, but it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes sense. Uh, that kind of, uh, I don't want to say like individualism, but that sense of like, pay attention to me kind of thing is a little bit more prominent in North America than yeah. it is in We're Europe a little bit more flashy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a little, <laughs> little bit more obnoxious. <laughs> Outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but I, I actually wanted to ask Nelly, where were you born? Like, where, where did the French come from? I'm from the south of France, uh, oh, okay. Toulouse. Yeah, so ah. my, my whole family still live there. I just moved there on my own. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I guess, actually, you want to, did you want to move on to our next question? Or I don't know if you can, did you see yeah. that one? Um, That's okay. Yeah. So when you're so when you guys are going into promoting your stuff online, um, we talked about this a little bit before. But uh, when how do you decide and when do you decide to use English in your advertising and your music compared to when you use French? Like, are, do you guys think about that very often? Like, do you think, OK, in this advertisement, because I'm advertising here, I'm going to use English. But because I'm advertising here, I will be using French like. Does that play into uh, promoting yourself online with your music or no? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I do a lot of promotion in Spain, so I use Spanish for that. Mm. Uh, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, it, when it's in France, I use French, and everywhere else, I, I would use English. Especially if I'm promoting a content like uh, uh, the inclusion of a song in a TV show or something, and that TV show is worldwide, I will use English. And if it's very specific to a market, I would try to use the, the language mm -hmm. from that market. Even if I don't know how to speak, I, I, I will <laughs> ask somebody like to write something in Italian or something. Uh, yeah, so. I was going to say, like, do you use the same advertisement, but just change the translation? Or do you use different advertisements? No, I mean, it's better to use different advertisements, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Because you, you have to find what is going to appeal to your audience, and it's... It, can be very different uh, mm -hmm. in a country, even even Spain and France, which are close. Uh, it's very different. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. They're not very far, but that's a really good I point. I never thought that, about that before. Yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Uh -huh. Interesting. <laughs> uh, you, well, that, you, 
you need to adapt. You, need, you yeah. clearly need to adapt and you agree to do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay, so I want, I have another question here before. What would you say, let me just see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, what are some differences that you guys have found between French artists now, so in 2020, compared to maybe 10 to 15 years ago? What are some differences that maybe you guys have noticed um, that are completely different now? Yeah, uh, like I said maybe just before, uh, actually there are a, a big wave of rap music uh, and there are maybe the major uh, the, the the major style mm -hmm. of music yeah, actually mm -hmm. in, in in france M maybe in 10 or 15 years it was more like pop rock music i think mm -hmm. or maybe uh french uh variety mm -hmm. some, I, I don't know the word but something like that and yeah there are uh, uh, urban um music maybe uh to to uh, it, that music was just arrived and and grow 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 and mm -hmm. actually this is the the same the, the more used more used uh style yeah. i don't know if this is for this is a good thing or a bad thing but yes the, the, there is a difference to to notice yeah mm -hmm. yeah but well, actually, I think that that uh, France is the second hip hop market in the world after the United States. Mm -hmm. So second or third market for uh, rap music. So wow. in, the, in the in the world, yeah. So, mm. That's really cool. I think we went from Souchon, Raphael Gainsbourg, uh, all variety, romantic mm -hmm. uh, music to purely rap or, yeah. and some girls who are like feminist, well, feminist like type and. Mm -hmm. We lost the romanticism, I think, a bit in the music, like Amélie Poulain and all that mm. stuff. I, I think it's kind of missing now. Maybe yeah. I don't know bands yeah. enough, but that's so it's kind the of main changing. change I noticed. It's mainly rap, rap, rap. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I like rap, though, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like... I like it, too. It's identity a little bit of, like, French... I see maybe a, a thing about about this question uh maybe to link with the radio station uh mm. i i think uh in french there are a, a quota a, a percentage mm -hmm. uh, to uh, french music to uh with french language to um to diffuse to to spread and in quebec in montreal uh, in canada too obviously mm -hmm. and a lot of different types of music, like rock, like folk, like pop, or maybe electro, use English words, English part, or all of all in English. And actually, because there are percentage, a lot of this music with a little bit English don't be uh, allowed to to be spread. And the rap music only in, in French can be more spread in radio station. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is a reason to, mm -hmm. to, to, to have our environment musical uh, right now. It's, it's like, actually a, a good thing for French music's uh, identity because rap music in France is, I mean, there is no French artist that I know that can rap in English. Or maybe there are two or three, so all of that music is is in French, and that reinforces the identity of the music thing, I think. Mm. Uh, where uh, all the other styles, all the other, other uh, genre of music, you have some of it in French and some of it in English. Yeah. So I mean that uh, the success of rap music right now is, I think, a good thing for mm -hmm. for the French identity, mm -hmm. uh, and also it's. A, the success of the young listeners, because with the streaming platforms now, uh, young people, which are the, the one who listen to rap music mostly, uh, they listen to a lot more of music than 
we old people, I am old, do. I mean, I will, I will listen to like, on a good week, I will listen to one album each day if I have the time. Yeah. It's more accessible, right? Just yeah. Well, and, and, and the thing too is like, even on TikTok, like I, I see people yeah, yeah. rapping in mm -hmm. French all the time yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So that's, I think that's good for identity and it's a, it's, it's yeah. youth. So you cannot go against it. You have to, you, you have to be for it. To be Absolutely. Yes. So the moral of the story is everyone needs to go listen to French <laughs> rap right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lampal, Lampal is a good, is a very good example of something really well produced and well written in French. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Do you guys listen to Zola? I don't know. Zola? No. Oh. That's okay. Oh, they were, yeah, he's a French trap artist. Some people were wondering if you guys yeah? listen to Zola. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Let me check. Literally really funny because so I came to Paris to work in Chanel. We are in the Champs Elysees and everything. And I'm with like rap music. And if they heard what I'm listening to, they will kick me out. <laughs> I mean, the so okay. like... <laughs> Absolutely. Love it. Um, cool. So that was actually our last question for the day, everybody. We are unfortunately out of time, but we are so, so lucky and grateful to have had you all on. Um, if you guys are at home watching uh, this roundtable with Vienna White on Twitch, make sure to follow us. Or if you're on Reddit, you can also give a follow. Uh, if you want to hear this conversation via podcast, it will be posted later on today. Uh, I'm your host, Millie Rouge, and thank you so much, Marissa Kay, for being the co-host of the show today. Marissa, where can you find our band on the internet? Yeah, our band, you can find us at Vienna White on Instagram or ViennaWhite.com. Fantastic. And we're going to go through, we're going to finish off this round table here. If we could just go around and everyone just kind of give your socials where people can find you and uh, we'll head on out here. Yeah. So actually, Simon, can you start us off by telling us your name and your social media? The na uh, my name? The name of my band, you yes. mean? Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, Ravage, Ravages, uh, in English, it's easier for people to guess the spelling. Ravages.fr. Oh, we are on Spotify, uh, Deezer, and Tidal, everything. We just released a new single called Metamorphose, which in Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a new EP coming up in the fall and an album next year. And hopefully we will play live someday yeah. for you in the world. But that's we, uh, we just did a, a live stream on Facebook that you should check out also. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. And Cora, where can our audience find you? Can you sign yourself out? Uh, so Cora is with K and two points in the O. And so it's K-O-R-I-A-R-A. -R -A. Yeah. And the Instagram is at Cora O-F-F -F from official. And I just released a single yesterday called Out. Mm. And talking oh. about languages, it's in Spanish and English. Yeah. So it's really funny. And uh, I, will re I will be releasing some uh, um, a few with some friend of Damso and uh, another one with an Argentinian singer, Maxi Druso, which cool. is really working there. So a lot of single releases from different styles coming out. So Cora of with 2 f Thank you for having me here as well. And Nali, can you sign yourself out? Yes, yeah, so um, nalimusic.com is my website. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, nali.music or Facebook, Nali Music. I just released uh, about three weeks ago, my first music video, uh, the song is called Num Dipa, so you can go check it out. And a lot, of, lots of other music and songs are um, on the way. So um, yeah, thanks for having me. And, Absolutely, yeah. thanks for being on. <laughs> and Mathieu, can you sign yourself out as well? Yes, in you can find me in my YouTube channel, Mathieu Chapeau, the same name. And normally, I will release a new rap acoustic cover this Wednesday uh, with a friend. And I create my own uh, video clip. I tried. So let's check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone. Merci thank tout you. le monde. Bonne journée. Thank you. Bonsoir. Uh, merci. merci. Great to meet you all. <laughs> I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye. So, Bye. Bye. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this conversation and you wanna keep listening, head over to our Twitch and our Spotify for the full recording. Make sure you smack that like button and the subscribe button on YouTube before you go. See you next show.